Hello. In this video, I'm going to answer the question, why do I need a data warehouse? Or, why do we do business intelligence? And this video is aimed at the executive or the manager who's asking this question. Who's asking why, if I already have my data in my current operating systems, why do I need to go to all the trouble and the expense and the risk of moving this over to some other system? And why do I need to rewrite all my reports? We're going to answer that question in this video today. We first need to consider what your current or operational system is. And we need to understand that all software database applications are just a model of some reality. They're a model of your business process. But this model is not your business process. It's not the reality. In the words of Alfred Korzybinski, the map is not the territory. And again, this model is not your business. And we forget this at our peril. Here's a couple of other quotes. And a perfect example of what I'm talking about here Happened to, me, happened to me just this week. I went to my doctor for my annual physical. And on the way out, I thought, well, now's a good time to make an appointment for next year because in 12 months, I'm going to forget. And so I asked the receptionist. I said, I'd like to make an appointment for next year. And she said, I'm sorry. We have new software, and we can only schedule it out six months at a time. So you're going to have to call us back in six months to make that, that appointment. Well, that floored me because most of us are lucky enough to only have to go to our doctor once a year. And a big part of their business is wrapped around these annual appointments and annual physicals and annual tests. So how is it that their software could not handle that? Well, it's a perfect example of letting the software drive the business rather than the business dictate what the software should do. It turns out that they didn't have their software set up correctly. So what is this reality that I'm talking about? Well, I'm going to use the example of a trucking company, a transportation management system. Now, you probably don't work in the transportation business. But the concepts that I'm going to present here apply to any business software. And what we're doing is we're moving freight from point A to point B. And so we have a model that does this. And so in the real world, there's this concept, or not concept, in the real world there is a trailer. Actually lots of trailers. My customer has between 10 and 20,000 trailers. And in my model I have a trailer table. And if you're not familiar with database tables, they're a lot like spreadsheets where there's rows and columns. And so there's a row in this trader table for every trailer that my customer owns. And then the columns are attributes of those traders, like the length and the ID and the type of trailer. And in the real world, there's locations, A and B. And in my model, I have a location table that has all the locations that my customer has. A row for each location with attributes or columns like the location name and the address. And in the real world, we're moving freight from A to B. There's this idea of a load or a contract. And in my model, I have a contract table. And the contract points to the trailer. The idea being here is we don't want to put all the details of the trailer on the contract. Instead, we just put a pointer to where those details can be found in the trailer table. Likewise with the location. We don't want to have this huge table that has every location and the address and all the details of every location. Instead, we have just one pointer that points to location A record and one pointer that points to the location B record. And there are other locations on my on a contract. For example, there's a, a bill to or a customer that's paying for the load. And in the real world, there's a move from A to B. And in my model, I have a move table with all the details about that move. And the move has two stops, a stop at point A and a stop at point B. And so the move points to the stops, and the move also points to the load or the contract and the trailer. And the stop points to the location. And some of my moves, some of my customers' moves are that simple, but typically I, I work with intermodal customers. That is customers who, they typically they move, they'll pick up a load at point A, they'll move it to a um, origin rail yard. Then they'll put it on a train and move it across country, a different mode, and to a destination rail yard, where another driver will pick up it and move that load to destination B. So it's called multimodal, so it's a little bit more complex. And all the moves point to the trailers that they're actually moving, and they point to the contract, and there are actually lots of other tables involved in this. There could be a quote table. Um, I need to know who the driver and the tractors are for each move. And likewise, with the rail move, I want to understand what the train, you know, details about the train. And in the real system, there's between 200 and 250 tables, and they're all linked together in this format. And the idea is, is that we want to have, we want to be able to get at just the specific piece of data we need for moving as that trader moves across country. And this is our operational system or operational database. And again, the idea is one record or field 
per, we'll call them transactions. And so a customer, a customer might call up and say, hey, where's my load? And so they'll call up at the customer service and the customer service person will say, well, give me the load number, the contract number. And then they'll drill down in here and they'll find where that one load is, what stop it might be on or what move it might be making right now. Or there might be a dispatcher who needs to assign the tractor and the driver to this one load. So it's all transaction, all one record at a time. And the idea is, it's actually, actually this, you know, there's 200 some tables that are all linked together. And this is in a, it's not just random or haphazard or chaotic. It actually has a very specific design, a very specific um, development called normal form, which was developed by a man named E.F. Codd. He was a scientist at IBM in the 1950s. And the idea is, is like, for example, if a location changes, if a customer moves, we want to only have to update that, that change data in one place. We don't want to have to go to every contract and every stop that, that used that location and update those. We want to update just the one place where it exists and then every place that points to that automatically picks up that change. And again, this is transaction. We're coming at this. Again, the user also, the user has a user interface around this. They don't have to deal with this database directly. But they're coming at it one trailer at a time or as this, move, move, as this load moves across country, they're updating just specific parts of it at a time. But that's not the only business function that's your business. In my case, there are other business functions besides dispatchers and customer service people. There's sales and marketing, there's executives, there's accounting, and they all want to look at this data in different ways. So for example, the executives might want to know what we'll call a destination performance analysis or destination performance report. They want to know what the actual arrival time is compared to the scheduled arrival time or compared to what we said it was going to be. So if we actually arrived after the scheduled time, we were late. If we arrived before the scheduled time, we were early. And they want to know how early or how late we were. And they want to know that not just for one record, not just for one load. But they want to know that, for example, for all the loads at a given location for a month or a week or a year even. And they want to organize it by customer so that sales and marketing can say, you know, yeah, we're, we're delivering what we sold. And so to do that, it brings up this idea of a dimensional architecture. So over here where we have this transactional or relational architecture, to do this analysis I just talked about, we need a dimensional architecture. And I apologize for pushing this up into the header, but I'm kind of running out of room here. In a dimensional architecture, we divide the data up into two different groups, two different types. We have facts, and facts are numbers, or add, they're called additive data. And so things like the actual arrival date times, or the miles, or the, the dollars for paying the drivers and paying the railroads. And, and billing the customer, dollars or facts. And then the other, other thing is dimensions. And so dimensions are things like the location and the, the, the date and customer. In fact, the, the dimensions then inform the facts. There are ways of getting at the facts and the way that these other groups think about this data. And this gives rise to this concept of a data cube. And a data cube has the facts that are in the cube and it's organized by, for example, date and location and customer. And you can have more or less than three dimensions, but three dimensions makes a nice cube and that gives a nice visual for what we're talking about. So there are three main goals for a dimensional architecture or a data warehouse or a data cube. And the first goal is, I'm going to call it mass data. So over here in the operational system, we're dealing with one load or one part of a load at a time. Over here, we're dealing with um, large chunks of data. We want all the moves um, for a month and we want to organize it by all the different locations and all the different customers. So we're looking at big um, data sets, big chunks of data that we need to, to handle at the same time. We also want to make it easier to use. As I said, the users over here, they have this nice user interface and a process that they are that they're following that the user interface helps lay out. Over here, the users really kind of want to get at their data directly. They, you know, we don't really know necessarily ahead of time what analysis they want to do. We do know what reports they might want to run, but we don't necessarily know, they don't necessarily know what, how they want to look at the data. So they want to actually access this data directly. So we want to give them something that looks like what they're trying to do. Over here, they're trying to move a load from A to B. Over here, they're just trying to arrive it at this stop or move it on this move or arrive it at, at this destination stop. Over here, they're doing it, they're looking at the data different. They're looking at big chunks of data. So we want to make it easier to use. And the third, the third goal is to get um, reporting out of operations. Again, this is a different use of the data. I had one customer 
who, was, who had a table in their operations side that at the beginning of the year had um, about 950 million records, almost a billion records in it. And they were doing reporting out of their operational uh, database. And they had, we'd written some reports that were weekly reports, I think, and I think there might have been a monthly report or two. And everything was humming along fine. And then suddenly the users started complaining that the, the system was running very slow and starting to crash. And the report users were saying, it's taking forever for our reports to run. What's going on? And so we dug into it, and it turns out that some manager, some um, executive, had decided that he needed to look at last year to date and compare that to this year to date. So he was trying to pull a billion records out of this database that was designed just to handle records one off, one at a time. And obviously it was crashing the system. Now he wasn't doing what he wasn't doing wasn't wrong. I mean, that's valid, a valid analysis that he wanted to do, but it was the wrong place to do it. We need to move that data over to a data cube where we can get these, these reporting users and these analysis out of analysts out of the operations. So how do we do this? Let's make some room here. So to create a data cube, we can do this, in, again, the data cube is just a, an abstract concept. But we can do it with a table. We can have a move fact table. We can have a table that has all the facts surrounding moves. So each record in here, each row in this fact table would be a move. And it has all the details, all the facts about that move. And I'm going, to, I'm going to create another one. I'm going to call it a financial fact table. So I'm going to create two cubes here, a move cube and a finance cube. And the finance cube has a record for every financial transaction, for every time they pay a driver, and every time they pay the railroad, and every, every piece of, of the, that they bill a customer is going to be a record in this fact table. And then we're going to surround the fact table with these dimensions. And again, we have a location dimension, and a date dimension, and a customer dimension. And I'm going to add a dimension, a lane dimension because these users kind of look at the data differently. They're looking at a, a bigger picture. They want to know f details about a move from A to B and maybe a freight type, which would be the definition of a lane would be a shipper and a, and a consignee or a delivery point and the bill to customer and maybe a load a type, of, a type of freight. And that's how they're looking at the data. That's how they're looking at the business. And so over here, we have maybe 200, 250 tables that are all cross-linked and, and in a complex way. Over here, it's much simpler. I can do these two cubes with just six tables, two fact tables and four dimension tables. And they're, they're linked, the way they're tied together, the dimensions and the facts is much, much flatter, much simpler. Much, it's the way that the users that are going to be look, using this data cube, it's the way they think about their data. So how do I do this? We'll use a process called ETL. And ETL extracts the data out of the operational system, and then it transforms it. It transforms it from this flat, normalized view to this dimensional architecture. We might do some other transformations along the way, too. Uh, we want to keep the transformations to a minimum, if possible, because we'd like for our users to have the data in as, as pure a form as possible. We don't, want to apply too many, we don't want to apply too many business rules to this. And so we transform the data. One of the things we also might transform is we might for example, if you've got an international business, we might, and so you, you have business in Mexico and the U.S. and Canada, and so you might have dollars in Mexican pesos and U.S. dollars and Canadian dollars, you might want to transform those all to the same uh, currency type. And that's called a single version of the truth. So we want our data warehouse to be a single version of the business or the truth. And then we load the data into the data warehouse. So ETL is extract, transform, and load. And one of the transformations that I like to make is like in the name of making things simpler, easier to use, I like to give things full names. So if I hadn't told you that um, SCH underscore ARR was scheduled arrival time, you probably wouldn't have been able to guess that that's what that was. So in my data warehouse, I actually spell that out. And you know, as I mentioned, a move has two stops, an origin stop and a destination stop. And so I'm going to give full-on names, origin, scheduled, arrival, date, time, and destination, scheduled, arrival, date, time, and not leave it up to the user to guess what that means. And do the same thing with the uh, actual. And so in summary, why do I need a data warehouse or why do we do BI? Well, the operational system was not designed to do modern reporting and analysis. Modern reporting analysis requires large sets of data and it requires a different view of the data. We need a system that's tailored to meet the needs of these managers, executives, sales and marketing and accounting. We need to get non-operational users out of the operational system. And what are the main components of a data warehouse? 
Well, the first thing I list is the operational system. It's not really part of the data warehouse, but it is, it is the source of all data. Uh, there, uh, I take that back. There could be other sources, like there could be government databases that have requirements and, and different kinds of government regulations. Um, there could be people that have spreadsheets that are doing, you know, running your business and working from spreadsheets and stuff. And so we want to be able to pull all that stuff into the data warehouse using an ETL tool or extract it out of, this, out of the operational systems, transform it, and then load it into the data warehouse. And then we have the thing that I kind of hinted at, which was is a reporting tool. No matter how well we define the data warehouse, how, how easy it is to use, we still need to give our users some kind of tool to access that data. And it could be as simple as an Excel spreadsheet. You can use an Excel spreadsheet to attach to a database. Or in modern, more modern usage, we find that people are using things like crystal reports or business objects. I like to use a reporting tool called Jasper Reports that makes it easier for doing analysis and reporting. And so this is the data warehouse. And this is why we need a data warehouse. And this is why you want a data warehouse. And I hope that explains what you're looking for.